Hello Cheeky Nuggets, welcome to Dots Tactics Channel. Raheem Sterling had to give Liverpool a guard of honour and I was really looking forward to that. And then he went out and got a man of match. <laughs> so I was pretty disappointed. Pep needed this as a morale booster for his team after getting destroyed by Liverpool in the league points tally this season. And he certainly did that. But will he stay there if they don't get Champions League? Now, Klopp was trying to fight off questions at the end <laughs> about how drunk the players were. It was so evident that they were like just hung over. Um, Andy Robertson was declared by a few players during the week that he was the hardest partier and he was definitely the worst player out there. Um, now, I was surprised to see Sadio Mane playing so bad because I don't even think he drinks. But well, maybe he had his first drink, so <laughs> at one point he missed the ball. It was He was at the six-yard box and he just missed the ball. So quite hilarious um, game with a lot of in intriguing things. But there was a very intriguing tactical battle too, so we're going to talk about that. So City had Sterling, Jesus and Foden up front. I mean, how are you going to lose with Jesus up front? Um, I'm going to make another joke, but I won't. <laughs> Um, so De Bruyne mainly played in a centre attack mid in, in uh, attack, but when they were defending he dropped back into the midfield three. Liverpool had their regular 4-3-3 formation with the team that's been starting most of the season. Gomez came back in for an injured uh, Joel Matip and it proved costly, further proving my point that Matip is better than Gomez. When Man City were playing out from the back, they had a higher positioning for their wing backs than normally. Usually Kyle Walker drops into the right side centre back. But how they drew in the Liverpool forwards to create more openings down the field was they played a 3v3 on the ball. And this needed a lot of confidence in possession from the back three, including the goalkeeper. They would draw them in and there was four options behind the front three so they would decide um, based on the movement of the Liverpool forward in the press which direction to pass it. You have to be very quick thinking to do this. Um, if a foot was put wrong then it would lead to a chance and actually it did happen a few times but Liverpool were too drunk to finish them off. And if City were under pressure with these three, Gundogan would drop deeper and outnumber them with a 4v3 situation, including the goalkeeper. So to make it tougher for Man City, playing out from the back, Liverpool's workaholics in midfield, Henderson, Wijnaldum and Fabinho, pressed up very high and they were supported by a high line from the back four. Although the pace of Sterling caused a lot of trouble and because they had to push back that little bit more there was a lot of space for De Bruyne to fill the pockets in behind. So when Manchester City were looking to find penetration, De Bruyne would play through. If he was marked he would drag defenders out of position and the wingers would cut inside as well as run in behind. Sterling was especially good at doing this. Jesus triggered rotational movement between the four players. This made it unpredictable for whoever was going into the half space for a run. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching Dots Tactics channel. Please visit social media and follow us.